praise God, praise God, thank you Jesus, thank you Lord, thank you Lord, thank you Lord, ah, uh, the enemy is trying, you know, all of a sudden the internet just went and I'm thinking, where, praise God, we are going to continue, please just let somebody know that we are back, you see, this message has to come out, this is a message that the enemy is fighting, but we will continue. We will continue. Just let everybody know we are back. Praise God. We are back. Kaya Baroskia Dohoshalamandia. Romans chapter 5, verse 17. Romans 5:17. We are back. Jalege Biarosia. Continue to share the broadcast. Let somebody know that we are back. Jala Manda Rabosia. Hujagatia Mandra Doskia. Romans chapter 5, Kazu Jalamandia. Zigo Jaliba Rodia Sujalamahande. Mm, thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Paro Zigia Doho Jalamande Lebosia. Zambra Gia Sujahate. Zubagataya Manda Rabasia. Legebo Shataya Mande. Thank you, Jesus. Romans chapter 5, verse number 17. Mm. Romans 5, 17. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 17, For if because of one man's tre tre trespass, death reigned, through that one man, much more will those who have received. This message, I will preach it. Mm. Facebook, you will try to downplay me and to do all that. But I will preach this message. Watch, it says, For if because, for if because of one man's trespass death reigned through that one man much more much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man jesus christ so because of sin death reigned by one man kaya Bush. but he says how much more of those that have received abundance of grace i'm talking to you that have received christ as your lord and personal savior you have received abundance of grace the bible says you will reign in this life that means we are now members of God's rulership. What do we do in God's rulership? We reign, Kalabashia. We rule together with Jesus Christ. We, you and Christ, you rule together. So when you receive the gift of grace, the gift of righteousness, that day was your initiation into the reigning family. I'm here to tell somebody that you are in the reigning family. You will reign in this life. So when you receive the gift of grace, you receive the gift of righteousness, that there was your initiation into the reigning family. Ah, My goodness. Look at Colossians. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, Colossians, Colossians chapter 1, <clears throat> praise God. Colossians chapter 1. Ah, Lege Bosha, I don't know why this internet is doing this. Saraba Zigia Dohosha, Limbroskia Dohosha Lamahande. Ha, Kazagida Baharezia. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Colossians 1, verse number 12. Ziga Baroskia Dohonde Lebosha Tayamandia. Barasigia tu shalamandia. Uza gija ale bohoja. Barasigia do hoja lamandia. Gasu grada bahadia. Thank you, Jesus. Barasuja ha telemande rebosia. Mm. Colossians chapter 1. Praise God. <clears throat> Are you there? Colossians chapter 1, verse number 12. Chapter 1, verse number 12 to 14. Praise God. It says, Giving thanks. Ah, Kibarosia doho jalamandia. Giving thanks to the Father who has what? Who has qualified you 
to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. I am speaking to somebody that not your pastor, not your prophets, not your bishop, but God himself has qualified you to be a partaker of the inheritance with the saints in the light. You are a partaker. You are a partaker. Zogoba has you. He says you have you 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 have been qualified by Jehovah God mm -mm, to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom. Zagisha la Mahandia. To the kingdom, to the kingdom, to the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This is the good news. Membra Siagusha, because of his death, his burial, and his resurrection, and because you have believed that message, you have believed it, you have been made a partaker of the inheritance. You have been qualified. You have been justified. You have been accepted in the beloved. You are now the household of God. Ha! Huh. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I'm here to announce you have been qualified. You are qualified to be a partaker of the inheritance. So every inheritance, every promise, every promise, has been fulfilled in Christ Jesus. And you are where the promises have been fulfilled. So I want you to pay attention. We are delivered from the kingdom to another. We are delivered from one kingdom to another. The kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light. That is deliverance. The movement. So with this new kingdom. Oh, Ruski Adohosh. I don't know you are ready for this. With this new kingdom. We have capacity to reign. <laughs> In this new kingdom, we have capacity to reign. We reign over Satan. We reign over sickness. We reign over lack. We reign over diseases. We reign. We have capacity. In this kingdom where you are now, you have the ability, you have the capacity to reign. You reign over Satan. You reign over sickness. You reign over disease. You reign over lack. You reign. And righteousness is the gift. Is a gift in this kingdom. <laughs> righteousness is a gift in this kingdom. This is the kingdom where you have entered. Because you have believed. For the Bible says, unless a man believes, he will not enter the kingdom. Because you have believed, you have entered the kingdom. And in that kingdom that you have entered, you have capacity to reign. You are a partaker. You are, we are partakers with God. We reign to God. Our rulership with God is intertwined. It cannot be separated. It is eternal. Look at Romans chapter 5. Look at Romans chapter number 5. Look at Romans chapter number 5, verse 1. Romans 5, verse 1 to 2. Barosigia do hoja la mandia. Maragiza gujalha. Zimba tosa. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, through him, we have also obtained by faith into his grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Since we have believed, we have been justified. Hey, So no matter the situation... No matter the situation you are going through, no matter the storms that you may be facing, you are a member of the kingdom. You ought to rejoice. Kaya Baruskia. In the midst of the storm, rejoice. In the midst of whatever trials you may be facing, rejoice because the kingdom you are in. You ought to rejoice. For the Bible declares, for many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver them all. So the storm that you are going through, Jehovah God will deliver you out of that storm. I declare and I decree. Whatever storm that you are facing, whatever trial that you are facing, because you are in the kingdom, you are in the beloved, it is Jehovah God that will deliver you out of it. Because for many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them all. You are in a kingdom where you have capacity to reign. 
Shagata ya mandele bosia. Limbra dia suja. It does not matter what you are facing. But I'm here to announce to you. You are in the kingdom where you reign. Look at Matthew. Look at Matthew chapter 6, 33. Matthew 6, 33. Matthew 6, 33. Ale gabo hojata la mandia. Matthew 6, 33. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Matthew 6, 33. But seek. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. The word first, the word first there. It means it's not first, second, and third. When it says seek ye first, that word first, it does not mean first, second, third. It only means seek ye first only my god am i teaching here when the bible says seek ye first the kingdom of god that word first does not mean first second and third that word first in the original it means only seek ye only that word first is not first second third it only means only seek ye only not so when he says seek ye first it's not seek ye first, second, third. That word first means only. Seek ye only. Am I teaching here? Seek ye only. Look at Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter number 2. Hebrews chapter number 2. Baro zigia dohoja la mahande. Lingra baskia dohoja. Hebrews chapter 2 verse number 14. Yimbaraskia dohoja la mandia. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter number 2 Are you there? Are you still here? Praise God You have been blessed Life is flowing through the airwaves mm. You have been liberated through the word Look at Hebrews chapter number 2 Verse 14 Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood He himself likewise partook of the same things That through death he might destroy the one Who has the power of death that is the devil. That scripture alone will, will demystify all this concept of God was killing. You now see who had the power of death. Now you now know who was killing in the Old Testament. I remember I did, um, there's a teaching that I did, a series actually, Rumors About God. So if you have not watched it, you know, you need to go to our YouTube. I think what you need to do is you need to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that we, we forget this Facebook. Because Facebook is, I don't know. Is playing up. It does not want us to preach the gospel. But if you preach nonsense, oh, it will not cut off. But if you are preaching something that gives life. So what you need to do is, if, I, if you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, I think you need to do that. So that we start doing our broadcast live from YouTube. Praise God. Look at verse 15. So we, he who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who... Through fear of death, we're subject to lifelong slavery. Remember, he took away the power of death. He took away the power of death from the one that had it. So, believers, now, talking of you, we have no fear of death. Okay? We have no fear of death. For we have passed from death to life. So even if believers are sleeping, he, still, he is still in life. Oh, let me say that again. <clears throat> Jesus took away the power of death from the one that had, death, had the power of death. So even us as believers, we are not fearful of death. Even when a believer is sleeping, he might be sleeping, but he is still in life. Shaliba, did you hear that? Even if I die, I am still in life. I am sleeping. A believer, we, we don't die, we sleep. Why do we sleep? Because 
the life of God is still in us. We are in life. Even if I sleep, I am still in life. I want you to understand that in this kingdom, his kingdom, in this kingdom, I want you to understand this now. In this kingdom, that is who we are. His kingdom is the heart of men. So when somebody says, oh, we are going to enter the kingdom, uh-uh. The kingdom is the heart of men. We are in the kingdom. The heart of men. <laughs> that is the kingdom. So the man that has believed is in the kingdom of God. A man that does not believe is in the kingdom of the devil. There is no two ways about it. So, without Christ, you are Satan's domain. If you are not born again, you are the temple of Satan. Whether you do good, whether you don't do bad to people, whether you don't do, you know, you're not evil, you're not nasty, you are still the domain of Satan. If you're not born again, whether you're a nice person, you do good, you do charity work, it doesn't change the fact that you are still the domain of Satan. Unless you're born again. Because you are, if you're not born again, you're still in darkness. That's the domain of Satan. And if you are born again, you are in the kingdom of his dear son in his marvelous light. Okay. So you have to understand that. Whether you do good, you do nice, if you're not born again, you're still in the domain of Satan. Look at Ephesians. <clears throat> Look at Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians 2. Verse number 1 to 2. Praise God. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. Ephesians 2, 1 to 2. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins, in which you once walked. Pay attention. You once walked. That means you are not there. You once past tense. You once walked. Following the course of this world. Following the prince and the power. Prince of, prince of the power of the air. The spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. So those that have not believed whether you do good you are still the son of disobedience meaning that anybody that has not obeyed the gospel there is a spirit that is in them that is called satan working inside of them so the kingdom enters your heart by believing Believe in what? Believe in the gospel. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word, by the message of Christ. So when the message is preached, it gives you faith. So a, a child of God. So when the message is preached, watch this. It gives you faith. So that faith regenerates you and you become a child of God. It is that faith that regenerates you and you become a child of God. And when you become a child of God, remember this, for with the heart men believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confesses unto salvation. So you enter the kingdom by the gospel. Look at First Peter, and then we let, let me now flow, and then we close. First Peter. First Peter chapter one. First Peter one twenty three. Watch this. Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and the abiding word of God, you have been bought, you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and the abiding word of God. So you are 
you are given birth through the word. Watch this. Look at James. James 1. We're, we're going to flow now. James chapter 1. James chapter 1 verse 18. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Okay? We are a first, we are a kind of first fruits of his creatures. How? Through the word. So it is the word that gave birth to you. And many of you, you don't like the word, you like drama. You like to see people rolling, jumping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. But it is through the word that you, life came to you. And you are rejecting the word. You want drama. You want to see people falling, people vomiting, people rolling like snakes. That is just drama. So now look at Timothy, Titus, and then we carry on. Titus chapter 3, verse 5. Titus 3, verse number 5. Praise God. But when the goodness and the loving kindness of God, our Savior. Titus 3, verse number 5. But let's go to verse number 4 first for pretext. But when the goodness and the loving kindness of God, our Savior, appeared, He saved us. So the, when Jesus came, when God became man, the goodness and the loving kindness of God, our Savior, He appeared. So when he appeared, what happened? He saved us. Not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his mercy, by the washing of regeneration and the renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Christ Jesus, our Savior. So the Holy Spirit has been poured upon you richly. So we contributed nothing. His mercy saved us. And his mercy keeps us. We are kept by his mercy. We were saved by his mercy. So you are the new man in Christ. That new man in Christ has the joy in the Holy Ghost. So joy in the Holy Ghost is the lifestyle of the believer. Joy in the Holy Ghost is the lifestyle of a believer. While people are confused, while people are crying, while people are complaining, but they look at you. I don't know who I'm speaking to. They will look at you. They will ask you, but what is it with you, girl? And you tell them that it is the joy of the Holy Ghost. While others are struggling with this, others are going through confusion, others are going through trials, others are going through all sorts of storms. But they will look at you and say, blessing, what is it with you? You turn around, you tell them, it is the power, it is the joy of the Holy Ghost. Because it is our DNA, the joy of the Holy Ghost. But many believers... Many believers, many believers right now, they are frustrated because they have prized the earthly things above the joy. Because you don't have a new car, you don't have a new house, you are frustrated. Why? Because you have prized earthly things over the joy of the Lord. Car or no car, the joy of the Lord is within me. House or no house, the joy of the Lord is within me. You, your frustration is coming because you have priced earthly things over the joy of the Lord. Mm. So, when you price earthly things over the joy of the Lord, once money wants money, wants cars, clothes are better than Christ. To you, you are a destitute of disaster. When cars, money, clothes, they become more relevant to you, become more better to you than Christ, guess what? You are a destitute of disaster. Remember, we are in the world, but not of this world. That's why we have too much competition in the body of Christ. We have too much competition in the body of Christ. 
If only you people knew Kaya Baroski Adohosha. If only you knew what it took for Jesus, Mamberesia, for God to save us. He gave us his son. The Bible says in the book of, uh, just write this down. In the book of Romans 8, the, verse 32. Romans 8, 32. You can read this. Romans 8, 32. He who did not spare his own son, but he gave him up for us all. How will he not also give us, graciously give us all things? So the old things that you are saying, oh God, this if he did not spare his only son, but he gave him up for us all, how much more will he not also graciously give us all things? You are worried about all things. It is the joy of the Father to give you all things. I don't know what all things you are trusting God for, but I declare and I decree. Let there be a manifestation of all things that you have been asking and trusting God for if he did not spare his only son but he gave him up for us all how much more will he not also graciously give us all things that means a believer has all things you have all things but your, your question you're asking, but when you say I have all things, well, but I am not seeing the manifestation. The reason why you're not seeing the manifestation, it is because of Philemon chapter 1 verse number 6. The Bible declares, let the sharing of your faith become effectual, become effective, become impactful by acknowledging every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. For, for you to acknowledge, when you acknowledge every good thing that is in you, there will be a manifestation. The old things are already inside a believer. But you are not seeing the manifestation because you are not acknowledging that. You are still hoping. You are still... It's, it's like... It's like me right now. I'm wearing this tie. And I start praying to God. Oh God, give me a tie. I'm actually wearing a tie. And I'm asking God to give me a tie. That prayer God will be like, My daughter, I have given you all things. My son, I have given you all things. But because you are tuned in to, today... Oh, la bia sugrodia. I'm, I'm here to announce to you how do you activate that which is in you by acknowledging. Acknowledging every good thing that is in you, that is in Christ Jesus. He has given us all things. If he would not spare his son, he did not spare his son, but he gave him up for us all. How much more will he not also graciously give us all things? So all things are you are in you as a believer. You remember you are the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is the heart of men, the heart of those that have believed. So all things are there in you. For everything you need, everything that you need is in Christ. Everything you need is in Christ. My question is, where are you? You are in Christ. Where all things are given. So you need to acknowledge when you acknowledge, you will see the manifestation. Everything you need is in Christ. Unless you have connected with the foolish Galatians. Unless you are connected with the foolish Galatians who have been bewitched. The foolish Galatians, they have been bewitched. But you, you are listening. You are not part of the Galatians that have been bewitched. So joy is your portion. Remember, joy is your portion. Ziga baroski adohosha tayamande. Yuka paradia mandele bosha tayam. I'm about to say something right here. Please stay with me. Zumberezia mahazigi adohosha. Pariski adohosha. Joy is your portion. A believer is not a victim. A believer is a victor. A believer is not under. A believer is above. A believer is more than a conqueror. Look at the prophecy of Aliga Baharzi Agusha Lamahandia. Zambra Diasu. Look at the prophecy of, of David. Zugebosha Taya Mandelebosia. Look at the prophecy of David. Ziga Bahazi Gia Dohoja Lamahande. Zambra Gia Suja Hatele Gia Baroskia. Look at the prophecy of David. Mm, my God. Sungo Bosha Taya Manderebosia. Ali Gabasia. David. Psalms 118. 
Psalms 118. Psalms 118. I want you to look at this prophecy. My God, look at this prophecy. Psalms 118, verse 22 to 24. Are you still here? Psalms 118, verse 22 to 24. This is David's prophecy. He says, the stone, that the, reject, the, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. All right, I, I'm going to correct this prophecy in a few minutes because everybody uses this, this scripture without understanding. Everybody wakes up and says, oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice in it. That's not what it means. Understand the pretext, then the context. When you say this is the day that the Lord has made, people use that in ignorance without understanding. Understand this. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. That is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. David's prophecy about, that was David's prophecy about the resurrection of Jesus was the stone that Israel rejected. Shaligabasuga. That prophecy. David was prophesying. Remember, it was Jesus, the resurrection for Jesus. It was about the resurrection for Jesus. Remember, Jesus was the stone that Israel rejected because they rejected him by, they, by, by crucifying him. They crucified him. So on the third day, Kosha Telebosia, on the third day, he rose again. That day was the day of the Lord. His resurrection is the day of the Lord. So all this, all this is the day that the Lord has made. That's not what it means. The resurrection of Jesus is the day of the Lord. Because Israel rejected him. Because they rejected him, they crucified him. So that day is the day of the Lord. His resurrection is the day of the Lord. That was the day of the Lord. The day of redemption. That is the day of gladness. The day of his resurrection. The day of redemption is the day of gladness. So now pay attention. Anything that you see as a problem, I'm about to finish. Anything that you see as a problem in your life, please pay attention to this now. Anything that you see as a problem in your life is not a problem. Is not a problem. Jesus' death burial and resurrection he dealt with real problems your problem was sin your problem was separation with god so because of his death his burial and his resurrection he dealt with the real problems so what you term a problem is changeable shakataya manderebosha what you term a problem is not a problem because it is changeable. That is why we celebrate. Watch this. Look at 2 Corinthians. Praise God. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 18. <clears throat> the Bible says, As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient. The things that are seen, they are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. So that means the things that are seen, so they are temporal. Transient means temporal. The things that you are saying is a problem in your life is transient. The things that are seen are temporal. Whatever situation that you are seeing now is transient. It is subject to change. So the word transient right there, it means temporal, means they are subject to change. What Christ did is eternal, meaning the, the eternal changes the temporal. 
My God, the problems that you are saying there is a problem in your life, I am here to announce that that problem is transient, is temporal, it is subject to change. And with what Jesus did is eternal, and the eternal will change the transient. So because of his death, his burial, and his resurrection, what Christ did is eternal, meaning the eternal will change the temporal. Look at uh, Zephaniah. Mm, I'm about to close now. Look at Zephaniah 317. Glory to God. Huh? Mm, Zephaniah 3 verse 3 Zephaniah 317. Zephaniah 317. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with a loud singing. I'm about to announce to somebody that is watching right now. When the Bible declares it, the Lord your God is in your midst. Now watch this. He resides in you. And the Bible is saying that means God is rejoicing over you. God is rejoicing over you. God is rejoicing over your life. So because God is your father, you have no reason not to be rejoicing. The Bible says, a mighty one who will save, you have been saved. He will rejoice over you. God is rejoicing over you. If somebody, if they had told you that you are nothing, I am here to announce that Jehovah God is looking at you. Not only is he looking at you, the Bible declares he neither sleeps nor slumber. He is watching over you not only is he watching over you but he is rejoicing over you you are the beloved of the lord irregardless of what you are facing the lord is rejoicing over you he is saying this is my son this is my daughter when he looks at you he is rejoicing even if the world does not rejoice with you but i'm here to announce her we are in this world but not of the world but god almighty is rejoicing over you he is looking at you and he is saying this is my beloved daughter this is my beloved son i rejoice over them when god looks at you he smiles said my beloved daughter that carries my DNA. That has my spirit in him. In her. I reside in my daughter. When God looks at you, he is rejoicing. Mm. He is rejoicing. Praise God forevermore. So God is your father. So you have no reason not to be rejoicing. Right now, there is a season in the camp. There is, there, is, there is sorrow in the camp of the enemy. There is, there, is, there, is, there is sorrow in the camp of the enemy. How do I mean? Look at the Bible in the book of Psalms 70. Oh, Charlie Gabia Rosia Huja. Psalms 70. Praise God. Psalm 70, verse number 4. Watch this. May all who seek you. Rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say forevermore, God is great. Mm. So the reason of your rejoicing is salvation. <laughs> Woo! So there is sorrow in the camp of the enemy because the enemy did not want you, Kalebosha, to come into the light. That's why the Bible says he has blinded the eyes, Kalebosha, the prince of this world, has blinded the eyes of the world that they may not come to the light. But you have come to the light. So there is rejoicing. So your rejoicing is in salvation. That you have been saved. You have been justified. You have been acquitted. You have been parosagish sanctified redeemed you are the beloved of the lord you are in the kingdom of god my god mm. look at isaiah isaiah 12 oh glory to god look at isaiah 12 isaiah look at isaiah chapter 12 verse 3 isaiah 12 verse 3 isaiah 12 verse 3 O jamande bosa ya gasudala di bero non de salidia mandosa Merosigido shaladia. That is the joy of the Lord that is in me because I'm about to release a word to you right about now. Look at Isaiah chapter 12, verse number 3. With with joy. Ha! Yeah. 
With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And you will say in that day, give thanks. So what joy does? Joy draws waters from the well of salvation. When you say joy draws wells from the waters of salvation, oh my tabrenia sujalahadia. Please stay with me. I'm about to release a word to somebody. What joy does? It draws from the wells of salvation. When we say it draws from the wells of salvation, we are saying that it. When we say wells of salvation, it draws from the wells of salvation. It means it draws from the benefits of salvation. What are the benefits of salvation? Justification, sanctified, beloved. You are beloved of the Lord. You have been rescued, redeemed. So when joy, what joy does, it draws from the well of salvation. Everything that comes with salvation. You, when, when joy is activated in you, it draws from the well of salvation. So it brings out the benefits of salvation. With joy, you draw from the wells of salvation. Look at Nehemiah. Look at Nehemiah. Nehemiah, are you still here? Look at Nehemiah chapter 8 verse number 10. Nehemiah 8 verse number 10. Are you still here with me? Praise God. I'm glad you're still here with me. Look at Nehemiah chapter 8 verse number 10. Then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine and send portions to anyone who has nothing ready. For this day is holy to our Lord and do not be grieved for the joy of the Lord is your strength. What joy does, it, it, it strengthens you. So when you feel like you are, you are losing it, you are losing everything, you are losing your strength, your power, your joy brings strength to you. Rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. Because joy draws from the wells of salvation. Joy gives you strength. When you are weak, joy brings strength to you. The joy of the Lord is your strength. I declare and I decree that as you walk in joy, you will have victories. That you will have victories that you did not even pray for. Joy, what joy does, it draws from the well of salvation. There are things that you did not pray for, but because of joy, joy will make you walk in victories that you did not pray for. Mm. You just make up your mind. You just make up your mind to rejoice. Be intentional to rejoice. What are you rejoicing for? Salvation. Even when things seem not to be working out, you just begin to rejoice. Said, Father, I thank you for salvation. I thank you for your death, your burial, and your resurrection. I thank you because you, I have life. Just that, it activates the joy. And when joy is activated in you, it draws from the wells of salvation. And when joy is activated, you are strengthened with mighty power. Shalaba hazigia. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but be intentional. Lama Sigia Dohosha. Be intentional. Rejoice forevermore. I say rejoice. Lemba Roskia Dohosha. When you rejoice, you are saying, Hosha Talamandia. This is what you are saying. When you are rejoicing, Kaye Bosha. When you are rejoicing, you are saying, Whatever that I'm facing right now, it really is not an issue. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So, what rejoicing does, whatever that you might be facing, Sin, you are saying it is nothing it is not an issue remember it's transient it's temporal it's subject to change the eternal god will change the temporal so when you are rejoicing you are saying whatever that i'm facing right now it is temporal it is not really an issue for i have the solution and where is the solution the solution is in christ and where is christ christ is in you so the solution to that issue is right there within you Christ is the solution. And where is Christ? Christ is in you. He resides in you. So the solution is already in you. So when problems come to you, they are coming because the solution is already in you. 
When a problem comes in your life, just know it has come because there is solution. Because God operates from the end to the beginning. He gives you the solution before the problem comes. So when the problem comes, it is because the solution is already in you. The only thing that the devil targets is your joy. Mm -mm, mm -mm. What the devil targets is your joy. Because when your joy is gone, strength is gone. When your joy is gone, you cannot draw from the wells of salvation. So the devil, what he wants is to kill your joy. He targets your joy. But be intentional about it. Choose to rejoice. He targets your joy. That's what the devil does. He targets your joy. Remember the repentance of one sinner. The repentance of one sinner. Heaven rejoices. Watch this. Luke 10. And then we close. Luke 10. Oh, praise God. Luke chapter 10, verse number 20. Luke chapter 10, verse number 20. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but your names are written in heaven. Rejoice for your names are written in heaven. Rejoice for your names are written in the book of life. Salvation brings joy. Look at Luke. Stay in Luke. I had said Luke and then yeah. Stay in Luke. Luke chapter 1 verse 47. Luke chapter 1 verse 47. Praise God. Luke chapter 1 verse 47. It says... Okay, verse, let's go to verse uh, 46 for pretext. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on, all generations will be called, will call me blessed. Said, I rejoice, I rejoice. My spirit has rejoiced in the Lord. My spirit has rejoiced in the Lord, my Savior. So joy is the fruit of the Spirit. Look again in Luke 10. Luke 10. Stay in Luke 10. Luke 10, verse 18. Luke 10, verse 18 to 20. It says, And he said to them, I saw Satan falling like lightning. Behold, I have given you authority to trend on serpents and scorpions and all over the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you nevertheless do not rejoice in this that spirits are subject to you but rejoice that your names are written in heaven verse number 21 in that same hour Mandebo shataya la mandia. In that same hour he rejoiced in the holy spirit and said I thank you father lord of heaven and earth that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced. So if you are not rejoicing, you don't belong to that family. Because the family that we belong to is a family of rejoicing. Look at John and then we close. Oh God, we'll close with the book of John. We'll close with the book of John. Look at John. John 15. John 15 verse 11. John 15 verse 11. These things I have spoken to you. That my joy may be in you. And that your joy may be full. This is my commandment. That you love one another as I have loved you. That my joy be full in you. Stay with me. John 17, John 17, John 17, I'm closing with the book of John, John 17, but now I am coming to you and these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves, my joy fulfilled in themselves, oh Shalabahazia, stay with me in John, we are finishing with the book of John, Zembro Diasusha, John 16, John 16, 33, Kaya I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace, in the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, 
I have overcome the world. That means every tribulation that you might face now, take heart, rejoice, for I have overcome. That means the solution is already in you. Be of good cheer. That means rejoice. When the Bible says be of good cheer, it means rejoice. Joy is an instrument, instru, instruction, rather. It's an instruction and it's our nature. Be of good cheer. Mm, 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 mm. The Bible declares and says, though the fig tree may not blossom, no grapes, no vines, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be rejoicing. I will be joyful in God, though the fig tree may not produce. It doesn't matter what you might be facing. It doesn't matter that it seems like there is a delay. It seems like there is, there has been a hiccup. But I'm here to announce to you, rejoice forevermore. Rejoice forevermore. My beloved, this is the good news that I bring to you. That you are the beloved. You are of the family, of the household of God. For what you could not pay for, Jesus paid for it. That is the good news. Cars, houses, uh, all these other material things. That is not good news. When you buy a new house, a new car, a new whatever, when you get married, that is not good news. It is part of your inheritance. It is part of your DNA. The good news is Christ by his death, his burial, and his resurrection. He made it possible that you may have union, koinonia, with the Father. That God may reside in you. That which you could not pay for, he paid for you. That is the good news. With that good news, the Bible declares, rejoice forevermore. As you rejoice, you are drawing waters from the wells of salvation. What salvation brought about? By his stripes, you are healed. So as you rejoice, you are drawing your healing. Every benefit of salvation. Every joy of salvation. Every benefit of salvation. When you rejoice, you are drawing from the waters of salvation. Whatever that you might be facing, my beloved. Trials and tribulations, they will come. But let your joy strengthen you. Let your joy be intentional. Rejoice again, I say rejoice forevermore. Be intentional. Be intentional. Be intentional. Father, I declare and I decree. Everybody that is under the sound of my voice, the joy that is in them, Lord, mm. Let it be activated in the mighty name of Jesus. Let that joy be activated. Let they be able to draw from the wells of salvation in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare and I decree every storm that you are facing, every trial, every tribulation, every challenge that you are facing, the answer to that challenge is within you. Begin to rejoice. And when you are rejoicing, you are drawing from the well of salvation. I declare and I decree in this season, you will walk in victories that you never even prayed for. But because of the joy of the Lord, doors will be opened for you that you never prayed for because of the joy of the Lord. Whatever that they had planned against you, it will not work because of the joy of the Lord. As you draw from the well of salvation, I declare and I decree. Everything that you did not even pray for, because of the joy of the Lord, you will draw waters from the well of salvation whatever that you have been praying for whatever that you have been trusting god for i stand in agreement with you if god did not spare his only son but he gave him up for us all how much more will he not also graciously give us all things the old things i declare and i decree let there be a manifestation of the old things whatever that you have been trusting god for it is part of the old things if god did not spare his son but he gave him up for us all. I declare all things. Let there be manifested. Let there be a manifestation in the name of Jesus. Let your joy begin to rejoice. Begin to rejoice. As you rejoice, you are drawing from the well of salvation. And as you rejoice, you are strengthened. 
When the days that you feel like you are weak, the days that you feel of giving up, I am here to announce to you, do not give up because when God is looking at you, he is rejoicing over you. He is saying, this is my daughter. This is my son. When he looks at you, he is rejoicing. Never give up. Don't give up. And don't give in. Don't allow the enemy to take your joy. That is the only thing that the enemy can take off you. It is your joy. Because he knows when he takes your joy, he has taken everything. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. When you rejoice, you are draw drawing waters from the well of salvation. I declare and I decree in this season and in this coming week, may every door that was closed, because of joy, those doors will begin to open for you. I declare and I decree. Every sickness that has been a hindrance in your life, begin to rejoice and you will draw from the well of salvation. That which salvation brought about by his stripes, you are healed. You have been justified. You have been redeemed. You have been sanctified. You are now the beloved. You are of the household of God. By so, my beloved, that there is the good news that he paid for what you could not pay for. But before I go, maybe there is somebody that is watching the broadcast. You are saying, how do I enter the kingdom? I want to enter the kingdom of God. It is very simple. Unless a man believes, he will not enter the kingdom. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Maybe you are here, you're watching, you're saying, I want to take this opportunity. I have heard the message that Jesus, he came, he died for my sins. While he was on the cross, he was thinking of me. When they were beating him mercilessly, when blood was gushing out, he was thinking of me. And today I want to receive that which he did. I want to receive life because it was life that he brought to us. Because if you are not born again, you are a dead man walking. So because of his death, his burial, and his resurrection, he brought about eternal life to us. And today, I want to receive life. I have, re I have heard the message. I have believed the gospel. But today, I want to receive life. If you are there, I want you to just pray this simple prayer with me. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for today. I thank you for your word. I believe in my heart that you came, you died, and paid the price for me, Lord. What I could not do for myself, you took my place. Father, because of the love that you have for me, today I believe in my heart. And I confess with my mouth that you are Lord and you are my personal savior. Today, Heavenly Father, I receive your life. I receive Zoe. I receive eternal life. As I receive life, Lord, I declare and I decree that I am born again. I am a child of God. And all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that you are my Lord and my personal Savior. And today, oh God, I receive life. I receive eternal life. I thank you for salvation. I thank you for the cross. I thank you for your death, your burial, and your resurrection. Because of that, oh God, today I have received life. And I declare that I am born again. I am a child of God. And behold, I am of the household of God. Father, I thank you for today. 
is the day of salvation and I rejoice in it. As I rejoice, O Heavenly Father, I am drawing from the wells of salvation. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. You are now my Lord and my personal Savior. I am born again. I am a child of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you have just made that prayer, I just want to say welcome to the household, to the family of God, to the reigning family. The, in this family, we reign, irregardless of whatever that we are going through. But in this family, we reign. And if you have just made that prayer, I want to say welcome to the family. And behold, all things have passed away. You don't have a past now. You have a future. And I declare that your future is brighter than your past. And if you have made that prayer, I encourage you to go to a Bible-believing church where you will be taught the Word of God so that you may grow in knowledge. For the Bible declares, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs no, not to be ashamed, but rightfully dividing the Word of truth. So if you have made that prayer, I encourage you, my beloved, to find a Bible-believing church that you will be edified, you will be equipped for the work of ministry. Praise God. From me, my beloved, it is Shalom. Glory to God. Shale Bessi Grinia Hondebo Sataya.